I think the Kevin Durant Achilles tear was actually caused by something that nobody's talking about. And the reason I think this is because I actually had something very similar happen to me. The thing I think a lot of people are forgetting about is remember when he had that Jones fracture? I think it was in 2014 when he was still playing for the Thunder. So the big question a lot of people are having is, was it an Achilles tear? And I'm pretty sure, maybe not a full tear, but it was probably at least half. Like you could see in slow motion when he moved, waves going up his leg. And to me that looked like something happened down here and traveled up, which is basically what happens in an Achilles tear. For me, it might happen when I was coming down from a layup. I just did a layup, landed completely normal, boom, boom. All of a sudden I fell down. It felt like someone kicked me here. And I was like, what happened? Did someone hit me? It, it felt kind of like an ankle sprain, but worse, but it was back here. I looked at some video footage someone was filming. There was nobody by me. It was the same thing with him. Like he was just pushing off. And when something like that happens and your foot's in this position, typically with the toe bent back, that's going to be more of an Achilles versus if you're like this landing and something happens or pushing and your foot is more in the extended position, that's more likely to be a cap. And when he fell, he was holding the Achilles. So I just, I think it was the Achilles, unfortunately. People are talking about right now, like what could have prevented it? What Was it the Warriors fault? Was it his fault for coming back too early? Some of the things that people are talking about are part of the issue. The calf like basketball players notoriously play with tight muscles I used to love it when my muscles were tight because I felt like I could spring higher I could jump quicker right I know there's been times when I'm playing and like when I tore my Achilles my calves were crazy tight that day crazy tight and I just kind of overlooked it and I'm like oh it'll be fine you know I'll just keep playing it's no big deal but muscle tightness when it starts to get really severe it can be a problem like sometimes maybe you've had it where you're pushing off and I have it where like it'll just like seize up to the point where it's not quite a cramp but it just won't really like move the way it should or all of a sudden you're pushing off and it'll just really tighten up. You can't ignore those things. That tightness can lead to a lot of tension in a muscle. And I think maybe that's what was happening with Durant and that's why he ended up doing the multiple tears, you know, from here down. So a couple things maybe he could have done to prevent it would be just like calf stretches. So you can do it like this to stretch the calf and lean in. Or, you know, do it with the knee bent and that'll get more of the Achilles maybe an angle behind something I learned in my rehab and you can also do it on the stairs another couple things is just rest rest if you're really tight hydration is big so if you're a basketball player you'll probably want to write those down and then also I found these things are called flossing bands but if you've had any like pulls like he had you'll get a really tight spot here right because he, he pulled the muscle here so what that does is since there's all that scar tissue built up in there it doesn't allow the muscle to really move in this spot. It's it's really tight, right? So something like this, or like some foam rolling or some deep tissue massage, it'll hurt, but it'll be good because that'll give that area some more give. Because if there's no give there, the body's gonna compensate somewhere else. Now, here's the thing where I think actually cause the issues that nobody's talking about. So in January of 2018 against the Mavericks, Durant actually tweaked his calf muscle there. So I'm sure that was another little piece of scar tissue building up in his muscle, right? Since those areas that he tore, you know, or that he pulled this recent time, and then the other one, like, are both not giving, it's gotta be compensated for somewhere else, right? But that isn't the big thing. Basketball players, you know, playing on hardwood, playing on concrete, that takes a real toll and it puts a lot of stress on your foot, right? The thing I think a lot of people are forgetting about is remember when he had that Jones fracture? I think it was in 2014 when he was still playing for the Thunder in his foot. Guess who else has a problem with their foot? This guy. I had a stress issue on the bottom of my feet and a lot of times when I was playing like I would be tight and tight and tight and I would just keep playing. I wouldn't stretch out. I would just, you know, I liked playing tight because I just felt more explosive and punchy with my movements. But what I noticed is one time I took a really hard step and I felt something kind of pop in the bottom of my foot and I never got it checked out. About another year or two later, I had some more issues, just constant stress under the bottom of my foot, pain, aching. What that did is, I think in his instance and mine, is that creates a lot of tightness, tension, scar tissue here. And a lot of people like to think of just, you know, okay, he tore his Achilles, the calf is related, but you gotta understand the whole body works as a unit, right? And there's fascia that runs all the way up here, all the way up the back of the heel. Um, the Jones fracture is typically happens a little back further towards the heel, and that runs all the way up. Now, I think a big reason where all this started coming from is because of that Jones fracture. The issue he had in the foot started causing problems. Now, to compensate, because that's tight, his calf muscle tore. 
and then his calf muscle tore, you know, already tweaked it the first time, and then he tore it in a different spot. Next thing you know, something else has to give, and that was the Achilles. So one other thing I think would have helped him in terms of that Jones fracture in his foot, and I'm sure he did some rehab and things like that. I have a feeling maybe he still has some tightness in his foot and may possibly some issues. What I would have done is some mobility work on the, the ankle joint, the foot, bending it down, bending the toes back, bending the ankle in like this, and taking the sock off and using these flossing bands. And this like is a game changer. Wrap it starting from here all the way up and I'll put it really tight. And then I'll do like some mobility things with the ankle basically, you know, pushing it around, bending the foot down, bending the toes back, stretching the calf. If there's a certain spot that's like really like tender and tight, that's probably some scar tissue area. So I would like find like either a lacrosse ball or take your knuckle and push into it like this. To really dig into the pressure. And if you really hold onto it, like just push and hold onto it, that pain will go away. Okay, so the two big questions, will he be the same player? Whose fault is it? And I don't think you can really completely blame the Warriors. He was cleared to play. It was partly his decision to play, but I'd love to hear what your guys' thoughts are on this. But I think really, it's just one of those situations where something had to give. I think it could have been prevented by, you know, breaking up some of that scar tissue in there and just listening to his body a little better. So the big question is, will he be the same player? In my personal opinion, from my tear, mentally, I just never really got back to the point of where I was, where I just get on the court and I play all day. And you just always have these little hesitations in your movements and there's a certain level of confidence that just isn't there in your body because you know how long that rehab process takes. Like I remember when I was getting back on the treadmill for the first time, you know, in my rehab and you know, they worked me up to that slowly. It took like two, three months. You know, I went from a boot with a wedge in it I didn't get surgery on mine, I was on crutches, and it was a step-by-step -step process. And when I first got onto the treadmill, that was the scariest thing in the world, just to, to walk. And then all of a sudden he's like, okay, we're gonna bump it up to a jog. Like, that was scary. So like, when you go through that entire process, all that like comes back and mentally weighs on you when you're on the court. So honestly, I hate to say it, but I don't think he's gonna be the same player. If he is, it's gonna take a solid year. It took me I, a year to get back into playing and going somewhat full speed, and then like another year after that before like I felt more close to where I was. But even then, like still the mentality just wasn't quite there. Leave me in your comments, let me know what you think. And leave me a comment, let me know if you think this is gonna affect his contract and his offers. It sounds like he's still gonna get some max offers, which I think, you know, he's still like a max type player, even with the injury. I think he'll still be a solid performer. If you'd like me to cover more about how to like prevent and rehab these types of injuries from my personal experience, let me know in the comments. And go to the top comment I'll have pinned for you. I have a free workout for you there, as well as a video that'll help you with improving your ball handling. You'll definitely wanna click both those links because they will help you a ton. Subscribe and click the bell icon to catch the newest videos, and I will see you in those things in the comments below next.